that way, then we can actually see each other. In the once in a blue moon experience that I had in a van with Srila Gurudev from Badger to Oakland uh, about eight years ago, Gurudev was saying that only when we love Krishna can we actually have any affection for anyone in this material world. All affection in this material world is illusion. So I said, well, what about the affection of God brothers and God sisters? So he said, will one Atma marry another Atma? So then uh, Nanda Gopa Prabhu was driving. So I said, well, what about Pundarik Prabhu who was in the car and Nanda Gopa? They're two God brothers. What about that affection? So Gurudev said, do you know who Nanda Gopal really is? Do you know him? No. Until we know who he really is, we cannot have real affection. So if we throw our rock, we're throwing rocks in the pool. If we all throw our rocks in the same spot, then the circles go round and round, bigger and bigger, till the edge of the pool or pond. But if we throw our rocks in different parts, then those circles overlap each other and there's conflict of the circles. Similarly, if we all put our love in Krishna, then our love expands to everyone, and when we all put our love in ourself and our objects of sense gratification, then there's always conflict of interest and quarrel and fear and lamentation. To be happy and to avoid all kinds of suffering, we have engaged our whole senses in that. Especially to remove suffering. And for this whole world, Sitting at a place, Sanjukta Rashtra. <coughs> United Nation. They discuss, but what they are doing? They cannot. More sufferings are coming. Old will, age will come. You will have to give up this body. So many problems. So, this is not. Also, we are always engaged in making money. That money will help us. But really not. Nitya arti deyina bhittena. Mirandasya Gyanan Janashalakaya Chakshurun Vilitam Yena Tasmai Sri Guruvena. So the next text Nityarti Dena Vitena Durlabe Natma Mrityuna Griha Patyapta Pashubhi Kapriti Saditais Chalai. It's speaking about wealth. Uh, wealth is a perpetual source of distress. It is most difficult to acquire, and it is virtual death for the soul. What satisfaction does one gain, actually, from his wealth? Similarly, how can one gain ultimate or permanent happiness from one's so-called home, children, relatives, and domestic animals, which are all maintained by one's hard-earned money. So here, Srila Gurudev has mentioned that wealth also, just like we have so many false hopes to enjoy in this world by connecting with another jiva and trying to establish happy family life, uh, this is our hope, this is our dream. Similarly, we also approach wealth in the same way. We think that if I acquire so much money, so much wealth, then my happiness is going to increase. Why? 
Because we think that by this money, oh, we can get the honey. <laughs> this is what Srila Prabhupada actually told in his purport. Money, money sweeter than honey. Brighter than sunshine. <laughs> so this is the hope and dream of the conditioned soul because he identifies that this money is the root cause of the happiness. Because by acquiring this money, this wealth, oh, then I can acquire all the necessary paraphernalia, all the necessary sense objects in this world. I can buy a nice big house. I can get a very beautiful car. I can have a big bank balance that I can draw from for all the, the uh, problems and all the responsibilities, raising the children, sending them through school and all of this. <clears throat> so there is this expectation that by acquiring so much wealth, then I'm going to be happy. <coughs> but actually, as it is stated here in this verse, what happens is the opposite. Uh, because the wealth itself is temporary. The wealth also is external to the soul. As Srimati Shamarani Didi describes so graphically, that the soul cannot actually enjoy the objects of this material world. And no matter how much wealth one acquires, the, the soul will still remain dissatisfied. We see many, many examples. There are many uh, current examples in modern history of personalities who acquired so much wealth uh, and so much fame, so much glory, big celebrities, Marilyn Monroe's and so forth, but they could not find happiness by all their fame, by all their wealth. So the soul cannot be satisfied by any external objects of this world. And the point that is being made here is that the wealth itself is temporary and therefore in the end, we will be dissatisfied. So what to speak of the objects that can be bought and purchased by this wealth? But nevertheless, everyone is going on with this grand illusion, thinking that the more I work hard, and the more that I try to acquire wealth, uh, then I will be able to get more sense gratification, and I will become happy. There's another series of verses in Srimad Bhagavatam, fifth canto, which our spiritual master Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, he used to quote quite often in his preaching, the teachings of Lord Rishabdev to his hundred sons. So he used to, he used to quote one verse, Nunam pramattak kurukte vikarma yad indriya pritaya apranoti tatsaramanye yata atmano yam asanna pi kleshada ashadeha Nunam pramatta kurute vikarma. They are very pramatta, the conditioned souls. This is describing the nature of the conditioned souls in this world. That they think out of this madness of a desire to enjoy sense gratification, they perform so many vikarmas. Nunam pramatta kurute vikarma. Because of this Illusion. This pramatta actually means madness or craziness. So the conditioned soul is in this illusion, this maya, as Gurudev described in the beginning of the class, that the whole material world is this maya, this strong illusion. So because of this pramatta, this craziness, yad indriya pritaya apranoti, he thinks that simply by enjoying the senses, uh, that this will bring satisfaction. But tatsaduman ye yata atmanoyam asanna pi kleshada asha deha. It only ends up bringing him more klesha. Klesha actually means sufferings. Because he's accepting this temporary material body, and by performing these vikarmas, vikarmas means prohibited activities, uh, trying to gain sense gratification, going to any extremes to acquire this. And the result of that is that, again, he has to accept another material body. Just like Srila Gurudev told yesterday, that because of attachment in this world, like Bharat Maharaj, he was attached to a, a baby deer. But the attachment between male and female in this world uh, is much stronger than that. So certainly at the time of death, if someone has cultivated this deep attachment within this life, 
then they will certainly be thinking at the time of death about the persons to whom they are attached. And the result is, male will be thinking of the female and become female. And female will be thinking of the male and become male in next life. And in this way, again, asanna piklejada asadeha. Again, he has to accept the miseries of this material body by taking birth again in this world. So all of these teachings being given in the 11th canto here are teaching the method for coming out of this illusion by first of all recognizing that it is illusion. And if we don't recognize this, then again and again we will become snared by this false conception of life, that I am this body uh, and everything belonging to me is actually mine. And by this identification, again, we have to accept another body. Jigyasu se uttamam sabde parecha nishanatam brahmo brahmani upasam. Om Gyana Timanandhasa Gyana Ondana Salakaya Chakshur Ngulitam Vena Tasmai Sri Guravi Nama So now, among Navayogendras, Prabhuddha Maharaj is giving the conclusion. Tasmat Gurum Prabhadeta Jigyasu Sraim Uttamam Shabde Pare Chanishnatam Brahmani Upashama Sraim We have heard how by relationships in this world we cannot be eternally happy. We have heard how by the accumulation of wealth and everything that that brings we cannot be permanently happy. Prabhupada Maharaj also mentioned by performing sacrifices and going to Swarag to the heavenly planets, one will eventually return here. So whichever path we take in life ends up with what? The repeated cycle of birth and death. No happiness or satisfaction, only endless frustration. Tazmat. Therefore, therefore because there is no way to success, because there is no other way to happiness, Tazmat, therefore, Gurum Prapadeta. One must submit oneself hmm, instead of to society, family members, and to one's senses and material desires. One must prapadita, submit oneself where tasmat gurum prapadita, at the lotus feet of Sadguru. Tasmat gurum prapadita jigyasu sayam uttamam. And there, at the lotus feet of Guru, one can inquire about sreya. Sreya means auspiciousness. One's ultimate benefit. What is the ultimate benefit for the jiva? In this world, the ultimate benefit for the jiva is Bhagavad Rati. Attachment for the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, therefore, such a person, such as ourselves, it is imperative that we take shelter of the lotus feet of Sadhguru and inquire, Who am I? Who is God? How can I attain auspiciousness in my life? Therefore, the first line of this verse describes the qualification of Shishya, the disciple. Hmm? The second line of the verse, Shabdai Parikanishnatam Brahmani Upashamashrayam, describes the qualifications of Sadguru, the bona fide spiritual master. Three qualifications have been given. One is Swarup Laksha. That means the intrinsic characteristic that makes a Vaishnava a Guru. All Vaishnavas actually are Gurus, they are real Vaishnava. What quality? That is the Swarup Lakshan that makes Guru Guru. Heavy, immovable, full of knowledge, more than that, full of Prem. That is called Swarup Lakshan. Other two qualities are called Tatasta Lakshan. Tatasta Lakshan, they are extrinsic characteristics or marginal characteristics, they may be there in those who are not Guru, but they will certainly be there in a person who is Guru. 
So, what are the, what is the Swarup Lakshan and the Tathastha Lakshan? First, Tathastha Lakshan. Brahmani Upasham Asrayam. Mm -hmm. He's detached from this world. The reason is because his heart is completely absorbed in Shri Krishna. So outwardly, we can see with the eyes how a person is, has no attachment in this world. Kanaka Kamini, Partishta Bhagini, Chariyati, Saito, Vaishnava. Sayana Sakta, Say Shuddha Bhakta. Those who have given up all attachment for the sex life, for collection of money, and for the accumulation of reputation. They're called Vaishnav. They've conquered the material energy. So first, the Tathastal action, Brahmani Upasham Ashrayam, he's detached from this world. Second Tathastal action is Shabde. Shabde Paritanish Natam, Brahmani Upasham Ashrayam. The word Shabde, Srila Jiva Goswami Pad in, in his Bhakti Sandarabha has given a description. He said, Shab, um, Shabde Brahmani Veda Tat Pariyena Nishnatam. It means that the Guru is deeply versed in the meanings of Ved, Vedanta, Upanishad, Puran, Gita, Bhagavat, everything. All the Shastras. He's deeply versed in that. And because he is convinced of the conclusion of the Shastra, therefore he can convince any conditioned soul in this world who is surrendered at his lotus feet. The living entities in this world have so many doubts. Hmm? But Sangsayatma Vinashati. If someone has doubt in Krishna, in Krishna Nam, Krishna Dham, hmm? then oh, they will lose everything. So how will the doubts be removed? So the, the second, that is the Tathastha Lakshan of Sri Guru, is he so fixed that in deep understanding of Shastra, and he can describe the philosophy of Ved, Vedanta, Upanishad in such a way that all the doubts in the hearts of the conditioned souls will be removed. Now we come to Swaruplakshan. Swaruplakshan is Shabde Pare Chanishnatam. Here the word is Pare. In Bhakti Sandarabha Deya Shri Lajiva Goswami Pad described. Pare Shabde Bhagavat Sarup Abir Bhavestu Aparok Shanubhavena. It means that the Sadguru is a person who within his heart has realized the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Jnanas hmm? Tattva Darshinaha Who has realization? Who has seen Radha and Krishna? Who is established in eternal relationship with Radha and Krishna? That is the actual Swarup Lakshan of the Sadguru. All of these things are described very beautifully here by Prabhuda Maharaj to Maharaj Nimi. If you want to know how we can go across Maya, endless pain of birth and death, and to have Krishna praying, certainly you will have to go to Gurudev. And that Guru has oh, this Sarupa Lakshan and Tata Lakshan, all qualities. He should know all these as that he can remove the doubts of devotees. But this will not do when some realization of Krishna. This is main thing. Then he will tell Gurudev his how he has attend Krishna Prem, he will describe himself, his story. Like Gopkumar told his own history to his disciples, otherwise. And Tata Selection also, Upasama Asrayam, he should not be attached to anyone in this world. No wife, no children, no wealth, no nothing. What about disciples? Will he be attached to disciples? Disciples must be humble to take all these things. He should be of high class, cool, family, humble. He should 
woke up in morning before guru dev and sleep after his taking rest always serving obeying not disobeying him thus then he had no attachment anywhere but he is merciful Krishna, because she has no left anything for all this. Only to Radha and Krishna, no time at all. Tatra Bhagavatam Dharman Sikhet Guru Atma Daivata Amaya Nubhitya Jastu Sadhat Madhuri. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyanandina Salakaya Chakshuru Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Gudevena Maha First of all, I offer my humble obeisances unto the lotus feet of my Gurudev, who has very mercifully invited me to attain the highest fulfillment. And I also offer my humble obeisances, Dhanabhat Pranam, to all Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis, who are present, all the learned and wonderful sannyasi senior Vaishnavas. And I ask them forgiveness for any offense I may have made. I don't speak so often, so I know that sometimes I may disturb or cause any difficulty. Please forgive me. Uh, first announcement, yeah, Nama Kapal Prabhu has announced has requested me to announce for Anukut, anyone who <laughs> anyone who wants to cook or prepare anything, they can contact Anukopaprabhu, <laughs> yourself or Nila Chaladidu. There is boga available for those who want to cook. Right, 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 right. <laughs> So I am not very qualified. I don't know how to cook. So Madhav Maharaj yesterday described the qualities of Kanishta Vaishnava that he has. He knows how to cook, and I don't even know how to cook. <laughs> so you can imagine my position. Now the sloka comes. Tatra Bhagavatam Dharman Sikshat Guru Atma Daivata Amaya Yatta Amaya Ya Anuvritya. Jais Tushyat Atman Atma Dohari. Not my mother language, my mother. <laughs> Translation Accepting the bona fide spiritual master as one's life. Accepting the bona fide spiritual master as one's life and soul and the worshipable deity, the disciple should learn from him the process of pure devotional service. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Hari, the soul of all souls, is inclined to give himself to his pure devotees. Therefore, the disciple should learn from the spiritual master to serve the Lord without duplicity and in such a faithful and favorable way that the Supreme Lord, being satisfied, will offer himself to the faithful disciple. This is the most beautiful description of the behavior of a disciple. I pray that one day I may attain this qualification. So here it says, the spiritual master is teaching what? Yeah. Sudha Bhakti, 
only the process of pure bhakti. And the disciple who is faithful, who is sincere, he will benefit so much. What is that process? Anabilasita sunyam, jnana karmadi anabritam, anukuryena krishna anusrinam bhaktir uttama. When we have the great good fortune to receive the merciful glance and shelter of the bonafide spiritual master, yeah. many of us come with material attachments, as we have just heard the description, how difficult it is to give up the relationship with the opposite sex, and especially the desire for money. Yeah. Life after life we have been associating with these sense objects. So very, very difficult. Many times we experience how difficult that is. How to overcome that? Only by faithfully, sincerely taking shelter of the lotus feet of the spiritual master. What does that mean? Yeah. That we have full faith. You have what the spiritual master, the bona fide spiritual master, is telling me it is for my ultimate benefit. I should follow that. Not only that, I should pray deep within my heart that my only attachment will be for the lotus feet, the service, the eternal association of that merciful personality who has saved me. Shri Gurudev just mentioned that the spiritual master is attached only to Krishna, to nothing else, nobody in this world. I once heard also, perhaps this is for the disciple most important, yeah, but attachment to nothing else except for Krishna means, first of all, do we know Krishna? First Krishna appears in front of the disciple, the aspiring disciple, in the form of Ashraya Bhagavan, Gurudev. If we have attachment only for Guru and Krishna, Ashraya Bhagavan, this will save us from all material calamities. And Gurudev mercifully instructs us in the process of pure bhakti only. This is the bona fide spiritual master. And most fortunate are those who are able to receive the association of that Sudha Vaishnava who is completely emerged in the mood of the internet followers in the line of Sri Rupa Goswami. What will he teach us? Amnaya Prahat Tatvam Hari Aha Harim Sarva Saktim Rasabdim. Not my mother language. <laughs> but Guru Deva teaches how the supreme, ultimate goal of us is Hari. Which Hari? Who is the son of Prajanda Nandana? Who is the reservoir of all pleasure? Who is the source of all pure love and affection? Whatever affection we want in this world is a very dim reflection of that very affection which freely yeah, Krishna wants to give. And as Gurudev said, Krishna is absorbed. He has no time to worry for us. But mercifully, Gurudev coming to the level of Madhyama Adhikari, he distributes that mercy by his own association, by his instructions. We can attain attachment yeah, to always please that very spiritual master, to always assist him in a menial way, and to, under his guidance, yeah, serve the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There's many things in my heart which I want to share and uh, 
I have not. I don't know how much time. Panie Kał potrzebuje szacunku. When we meet others, don't talk, oh, oh, so much suffering, my family has lost, uh, my wife has divorced me, what to do, so many things, don't discuss. Like Rup Sanatan, when they used to meet together, what doing? Always talking about Krishna. Prasparanukat. So disciples should learn this. And Mithorati. He should remind him and he should remind him. Always the very sweet pastimes of Krishna, always, always. So that maya cannot enter, other maya will come. And how Krishna Prem be achieved, he should learn from his Guru Dev. And then, Kvachit Rudanti Achyuta Chintaya, Kvachit Hasanti Nindanti Badanti Alau Kaka, Nityanti Gayanta Manusila Mantajam, Bhavanta Tushnen Paramitta Nipritta. How who they? He is always thinking in the ocean of Krishna, sweet pastimes. Kvachit Vajan. Oh, very Vilakshan Sthiti. Vilakshan? Vilakshan? Extraordinary. Extraordinary. Like this. Oh, that kind of sadhu or guru. Oh, extraordinary character. Huh? Way they, <coughs> sometimes they begin to think, oh, up till now, I have not taken the person of Krishna and Radhika. What should I do? Where to go? Crying bitterly. Here and there, where to go? Like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has told something like this. Kaha jau? Vajendra Nandan. Enough hearted. So, this is, this should be. He should learn all these things. And then they began to weep. <coughs> and sometimes he will remember that <coughs> Krishna Supreme Lord, but even having so many opponents, he is hiding himself in the council of gopis. And then he becomes very happy and he begins to laugh loudly. And sometimes he feels that I have seen Krishna and Radhika. And then he becomes so happy, accessing. And then he begins to sing the glories of Krishna and Radhika. And he becomes to search Krishna and Radhika, where they are, where Bhaktivinoda Thakura has written in his, in his song like that. <coughs> then he becomes. And then sometimes he becomes silent. 
So these are the things that a disciple, pure disciple, should learn from his Guru. This human form is given by Krishna very mercifully because he is causeless merciful. So don't waste your time in this grihastha ashram. We have told, and Krishna will told, tell himself, this is a blind well. Well. You have tested this sense gratification in your past course of life. So don't come towards this. So, all these things we should learn from Gurudev and follow his instruction. Go, Prima. Hare Krishna. So, what, what, what? Um, he said that the Guru is not attached to the disciple, he's only attached to Krishna. Yes. Another time you said that the Guru loves the disciple, but he's not loves attached. Him. So what's the difference? And loves him. And he has so much affection, but not attached. Because he is totally attached to Krishna. He has no his fraction to be attached anywhere else. But he will be merciful. And he, he, should, he will teach all these things. But not attached. What's the difference between love and attachment then? Oh, there is so much difference. <laughs> but Akasha and Pada. Like Pada has. Attachment is. <laughs> Lust, lust means morcha. Rust, rust. Rust, rust. And love is pure. Hare Krishna. So, the devotees who has requested for initiation will take place tomorrow 9 a.m. The Guru does bhajan kuti. So, who will desire for initiation? They have to be there before 9 a.m. And for new devotee, Recommendation needed by any senior devotee. So, tomorrow before 9 a.m. you have to appear there. For male devotee, you have to save your hair and keep sikha. And you have to register your name, you have to give ashram and take some time. So, please appear there just before 9 a.m. <coughs> Hare Krishna. Yeah, no problem. And tomorrow the devotees are arranging Nagar Sankirtan at 10 a.m. So who is the Sankirtan leader? Kishori Mohan, Vijay Prabhu and Sivananda Prabhu, they lead the Nagar Sankirtan. Whoever desires to contact with them, Hare Krishna. And day after tomorrow will be Annakut Mahotsav. For Annakut Mahotsav, so you have to prepare so many preparations. For preparation, you can contact with Simati Nilacham Didi or Nandagopal Prabhu. If you want to cook, you want to purchase, then you have to contact today, then they can arrange for you. Hare Krishna. Shri Radha Ramana Hari.